Welcome to PLM 411, where we give you straight talk about how to accelerate product innovation and product development. I'm Jim Brown with Tech Clarity, and I'm joined today by David Keeley of TSM Control Systems. Um, David, it's a pleasure to meet somebody. You've got uh, academic experience with PLM with your master's. Uh, you've got consulting experience, and you've got uh, practical experience implementing for, I, I believe, three companies on two different packages. So, um, honored to be with somebody with uh, such great experience. Well, thank you very much for having me, Jim. I appreciate it. So, um, one of the things that I know you and I have talked about before is uh, sort of the roles that different systems play. And um, I've written quite a bit about uh, how product lifecycle management and ERP fit together. And the, the way I viewed that is that PLM is uh, for, for product innovation, product development, and then uh, ERP is for the business execution of, of manufacturing and maybe some other systems for that pure execution. Um, but I know you've, you've talked about seeing a gap between PDM and, and ERP over time, and um, maybe you can talk a little bit about that. I think it's a pretty interesting way to look at it. Yeah, well, I, I, I suppose when I started my career 14 years ago at this point, you know, PDM was becoming more prevalent within, um, you know, manufacturing industry. And what I spotted straight away was that a lot of companies, they implemented their ERP system, so they were taking care of their financial assets and their physical assets and they implemented their PDM system, which was really looking after their CAD and, and to a certain extent their builds and materials and configurations, uh, maybe some change management. But all of the processes that happened around that product data, they were managed using spreadsheets or using email or using th disparate systems that weren't really associated or linked with their product data. And Really, the, the issue that that causes is that you know you, you tend to make mistakes, data the processes and information get duplicated, people aren't working efficiently, they can't find the information, and ultimately what it results in, in, in my opinion, is per, a poor quality of information which is reflected in your products, which we all know that ends up being reflected in your customer satisfaction. One of the things that I, I thought was really interesting about your implementation now um, a lot of people implement some pretty basic things like, you know, engineering change management, sort of a pretty typical, uh, you know, first process. But uh, I, I heard a number of processes that you'd implemented on uh, on the PLM tool, PLM 360 that you're using. Um, maybe you can give us a, an idea of how many and what type of processes you're looking at. And two of the simple things that we've put in place at TSM are um, a problem reporting tool, okay. which means that anybody throughout the company can report a problem and they can get right. notification about when it's been resolved by whoever the person within the company is that, that's, that right. has resolved it. Um, and then parallel to that, we've imp implemented a, like an idea management tool. So somebody can log an idea for a product process or document, any kind of innovation that they want or improvement that they want within the company. And what they feel is that they're being listened to. They get real feedback from that from from right. the company. It closes the loop, yeah. And we've designed it in such a way because these are basic workspaces. They, as we as we develop more complex workspaces like new product introduction, change management, um, quality management, we can actually use these workspaces as feeders into it. Right. But the front end doesn't change for the users. So it's it's you know it's a consistent field for the for them as as the as the system begins to grow behind it. Right. Um. But the big benefit is that you've rolled out a system or you've rolled out workspaces that everybody within your company uses. Yeah. And they immediately feel the value from it. And you're able, those, those workspaces, you can turn them around in, you know, a week, two weeks. You know, like it's really, really quick to be able to do that. And if you want to change it, you don't have to write somebody a check for $10,000 to do it. Right. You know, so it, it, it's all within your own power. And, uh, you know, and the thing is that information, when you've good information and you can trust it, it makes things much easier. Yeah. So, so lastly, um, in, in terms of the availability uh, for small to mid-sized enterprises of, of PLM, I mean, what have you seen change over the last few years? Oh, I think, you know, since I, when I worked for ABB and that was 2007, 2008, you know, when we were looking at the landscape of PLM um, packages that we could bring to the company, it was fairly limited, you know, um, and really the only only tr traditional packages were around at that time. Um, but in the past three or four years, we've seen a lot of new configurable um, PLM packages that have moved more, uh, have moved f further away from the PDM CAD centric core. And what it's done is it's given them much more flexibility in managing metadata and processes, and it's really allowed them to f to move into the the void very quickly. 
um, and it, it's it's what we've been crying out for. Yeah, it's certainly an exciting time. In yeah, industry, absolutely. So I, I appreciate you coming by and no uh, problem. A Thank to you talk very much. You look forward to staying in touch. Yep.